Hello, I'm Eileen Roach, founder of Designs and Machine Embroidery. And I was reading some of your comments. Of course, I'm so glad you're joining us. And many of you are joining us from cold, cold and windy portions of our country. So thank you for uh, snuggling at home. And Retha Ranke, I know that you are cross-stitching in your sewing room. Sounds enchanting, I'll tell you. So let us know in the comments where you are watching from. We just like everyone to kind of sign in so we know where you are. Um, today, we have a fun topic. It's going to be all about variegated threads. But I think the most exciting part about today's broadcast, broadcast is your samples that you have made of the small town charm quilt shop. Uh, there are so many beautiful ones. So we'll show them in just a moment. And uh, some of you are in, Misha, you're in Florida, lucky girl. And Mickey Geske in Southern California. Oh, it's nice to see everyone here. Uh, I really do appreciate it. And I imagine many of you Followed along last week with our friend Sue Brown at OML Embroidery because I found some of your small town charm samples, which I can't wait to share with you. So we're going to talk about variegated thread. We're going to talk about um, runs, columns, and fills and how you can get predictable results and so forth. So let's go ahead and first take a look at your small town charm quilt shops. They are just awesome. So one of the first uh, things that I found recently was by Candy Bray. And sh this is from 2020, where she put all of her dime doors together into a log cabin quilt. And she says, welcome to my neighborhood. But I guess, and I don't know Candy, but her comment is that it was a wonderful learning experience for both new, uh, for a new embroiderer to learn this whole fun process from Dime and OML. So uh, we're so, I know, I know, I'm sure I'm speaking for Sue Brown when I say that it's, that's a lovely compliment and it just warms my heart to know that um, you found this very helpful. It was a journey for sure. And so will 2021. Margie Hirschberger, she put all of her doors together into a quilt also. And she said that she that this was one of the fun things to do while being homebound within with the pandemic. So, oh, that's awesome. I'm glad to hear that. You know, that was really well, we started this in January, and so that was before the pandemic, but not too much further after our first door did we all land into this pandemic. So it it was a great way to keep us all together, keep us busy, but keep us united. So I'm very grateful for those of you who participated in 2020. And for 2021, it's all about small town charm. So let's take a look at Sueville, which is Sue Brown from OML Embroidery, her version. Of course, it's got a Halloween theme because she loves all that spookiness, right? And the wonky stripes on her um, fabric is, you know, absolutely handpicked by her because she wanted to give that really, um, you know, kind of gnarly look for Halloween, right? Look at the spider web fabric that she chose for her sidewalk. That's awesome. And of course, bright green and orange, you can't go wrong with that. Yeah, and some of you are saying, love Sue, like Tracy Powell, love Sue. Oh, I like your emoji with your mask. That's very nice. Yeah, uh, really great job, Sue, really lovely. But let's take a look at some of the people that participated in her sew along. Candy Bray, she did, um, she selected really beautiful fabric for her awning and uh, added an embroidered name, woven threads for her quilt shop. But let's go ahead and take a close up of her add ins that she chose. She used all uh, variegated thread for her fabric bolts in the, in the blues, denim blues, which looks just great. I love the dog and the fire hydrant a welcome mat you know it doesn't say welcome but i'm sure that's what it means and she added a little decoration those same kind of um little flourishes that are on the mat above the door and she also added a candle inside her um lamp post which i uh, mine was just blank so i love that i love that you went the extra mile now alicia gentry I have to say, this was the very first one that I saw online when I searched. And if you're going to post yours, you're going to use hashtag 
dime so along and then we can find it. So let's take a closer look of her add in. So she used all solid thread for her fabric bolts on the shelf, which I think is adorable. She found the smallest floral print that she uh, had in her stash to add underneath that sewing machine needle. That's beautiful. And then shop hop today. Who doesn't love a shop hop, right? Isn't that fun? And she has an open sign on her doors. She named it the Happiness Quilt Shop. She also put a uh, yellow thread in her lamppost, but also take a look at the fabric that she chose for her wall. So in the window, she didn't stitch those dimensional stitches that I included in my complex fill to make it appear to be wallpaper. Instead, she chose to add a print fabric that obviously was the perfect scale for wallpaper. And then over on the door, she did, you know, I'm not really sure what that is, whether that's individually pieced fabric or it just is a print that kind of looks like a floor and a quilt hanging on the wall and a potted plant maybe on the left. Adorable, beautifully, really well done, Alicia. Crystal Campbell, she also added the name of her store across the awning. I love the fabric that she chose for her brick, which is very true to life. And also the door fabric that she chose kind of looks like wallpaper inside. Now, my friend Deborah Mason Humphrey, she, in her comments, she said that she struggled with the awning. She made three of them, and I guess she had a blowout, you know, which means you get a hole in the seam when you turn those scallops. And, you know, I feel your pain, Deborah, because as the digitizer of this project, I can't tell you how many I stitched, how many samples, you know, it's all about the opening between the scallops that makes it successful. So instead of giving up, she stitched it on felt and it's adorable. I love it. And you just trim close to those satin stitches. No need to turn anything. Oh, well done, Deborah. Well done. I like that. Lisa Granley. Oh, this is a quilt shop that I would just love to visit with that lime green. How inviting. Now, Marilyn Rourke on uh, the right hand side, she said that she wanted to um, Marilyn Rourke Patno, I should say. She loves how the light reflects off her building and she wanted to add a Southwest theme, a theme to her store's name. So I love that. Adobe Textiles, I think that all blends just beautifully together. And then here's uh, Marjorie Hershberger. She also added some minis in her, um, in, she has flowers in the in the ground there by the side by the sidewalk in the grass sorry and a watering can and also a paradise welcome mat which is very nice she has some cute little emblems on the door she has two thimbles and a needle and thread which looks just lovely and then maureen lynch she chose um kind of a polka dot fabric for her background, which I love. It's a, a, like a snowy day. And who wouldn't want to visit that quilt shop on a snowy day? That's what her comment was. I love that. Robin uh, Rhodes. Now she said that her family owned a quilt store in a little town. So she thought it was quite fit to make this project and add her, I guess that the name of their quilt shop was Quilter's Dream. I'm guessing that, and I'm not quite sure, but beautiful job. And then Renault Paulson. Now, Renault, I remember some of your doors from 2021. I mean, from 2020, and that work that you did all through 2020 was outstanding, just as this one is also. Your fabric selections are just perfect. The scale of the prints really are um, the ideal selection for this project. And now Christina Alford, she added a, a beautiful print on her door. So take a look. That's probably a, a small cheater panel maybe that has a, a, a printed quilt block on it and you centered it perfectly on that applique. So it looks like there's a quilt hanging inside. Love that. Really well done. And then Curry Richard, those stripes, they're great for that awning. What a, Very well done. You know, I really struggled about using a stripe for the awning because I didn't want it to, you know, I wanted to give that 3D effect. And normally stripes kind of, you know, they're not just straight down. They kind of angle out in a 3D effect. But that looks great, Curry Richard. Really very nice. 
Now, Norma Gensler, she used vinyl for her awning. So, and it came out just beautiful. She added those fun pom-pom charms. Aren't they adorable? I love that. Well, not charms, they're, um, they're trim. And then Taneki Roman, she you kind of selected traditional fabrics, but I know there is many quilts around the country that look just like that. They have that kind of warm uh, earth tone look and just want to welcome you in. Now, Sue Whitaker was uh, one of the most recent ones that I found. And she's in Cape Cod, obviously. She named her quilt shop Cape Cod Quilts. And she has ladies inside the shop who are quite happy. Now, I, I learned that it, this fabric, these ladies are really pr printed fabric that's been in her stash for a very long time. And they are just the right scale for this project. It appears that she added vinyl over that fabric so that um, it, it gives the real effect of glass. And notice she's got a seagull in the sky and a seagull on the ground, true Cape Cod. But the real beauty of this is when you um, open that awning. So this is just a close up of her beautiful work. So let's take a look. It has a second story. How cute is that? She has a framed artwork of a sailboat and a spinning wheel and a stack of fabric, bolts of fabric. Oh, Sue, that is so well done. I was really impressed. We do have second stories that will be coming, you know, throughout 2021, but I, I'm really impressed with that lifting the attic. I just love it. Really well done. Christina, Alfred, you said this is a masterpiece. I agree. I think so many of them are uh, masterpieces. And Mathala, you didn't see it when you looked at the design after downloading, you might have to try to find one. Well, we don't have, um, I don't provide all of the extras. When I reveal my, door, my uh, small town charm building, what you see in the image of my building is what you will get in the file from me. But many of you are going out online and searching for embroidery designs or digging in your own stash and adding your own elements to make it your own. And then our friend Sue Brown over at OML Embroidery, after I reveal that new uh, building on Thursday, on Saturday, she does a sew along and often supplies minis there. And that sew along is free. So you're welcome to go over there and join that and see what Sue and her husband, Don, have in store for you. But I don't want you to think that your download was incomplete. It was not. The whole idea of Small Town Charm is that it stretches your skills. We want you to use your software, use the editing features on your embroidery machine and learn how to bring things in and, you know, make it your own. That's, that's the whole idea. That's the whole idea. So uh, don't think that there's anything wrong. So why don't we talk about variegated thread? And of course we have a special, right? It's all about, you know, a special. And this week we have a new collection of um, medley thread that's called Rainbow because it has uh, the four primary colors. So we have Cotton Candy, Sunset, and Forest Green, and Denim Blues. And it is a uh, great price, twenty-seven sixteen for the pack of four. They are 1,000 meter spools. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the details about variegated thread, right? Because there's a lot to learn. You know, des design selection is pretty important. You can't really just use variegated thread on any design. It, you probably won't be pleased with the results. So we'll take a look at how it can affect your fabric choices and how to predict results and so forth. So one of the best uses for variegated thread is run stitches. I, I have to admit that I really do like run stitches in variegated thread because it adds an, a slight contrast to flat work. And um, in this instance, you can see that the satin columns that frame the horse are done in a solid color. And it's really beautiful because it lets that uh, horse pop. 
which I, I really like. Now here is simple run stitch designs like those scissors. They um, get an added punch by using a variegated thread. You don't have to worry about adding a light accent in different places. It The thread does it for you. And also on the teacups on the right hand side, that's all random stitching. As beautiful as it is, that's random variegated thread stitched in one color. Butterflies, you know, you don't have to use just one spool of variegated thread to stitch an embroidery design. Like this gorgeous butterfly actually uses three different shades. It has uh, gold and reds and then browns that, uh, you know, really accent it. So it's uh, very well done. Now feathers, oh, feathers are beautiful in variegated thread because, you know, true feathers are not one solid color. They are, um, you know, a, ver a variety of, you know, highs and lows and lights and darks. So a variegated thread works very well, very well. Are there other variegated threads in a bundle besides what we just showed? Well, this is the, what's special on our website this week is these four. And we have plenty in stock. Um, so you don't have to worry about that. And then Tina Gordon, you won wondered if the 2020 doors were still available. They are not, they have been retired. That was a year long program that we um, offered to everyone for free for 12 months. And on New Year's Eve, um, we took them down and, and we, told, we told everybody that was gonna happen. So they are back in the vault for now. Okay, so let's go ahead over to the camera overhead camera and take a look at some of the samples. Here's our rainbow collection. Isn't that pretty? So we have the denim blues, the forest greens, cotton candy, and sunset. And here are the four spools that it comes with. Now you'll notice that I stitched our rainbow word in a font, and that font is Waffle from Perfect Embroidery Pro. And I can probably take you over to um, software in a little while and show you that. But let's take a closer look at these collections because I want you to understand how um, they are coordinated with the uh, colors from our line of um, thread, our variegated thread. I mean, our exquisite polyester thread. Ah! Okay, so here's our cotton candy. This is the variegated spool right here, but it's made up of these four different solid colors from our exquisite line of thread, which is exquisite polyester. And that's beige 30, beige 501, pink glaze 304, pink sorbet 321, and azalea 315. So if you have our full line of exquisite thread, these are the four colors that are make up this beautiful spool. So feel free to use these four in a uh, project that complements, you know, all each other. Now I've stitched some lace hearts. I didn't rinse them out. I thought they might actually show a little bit better on keeping the water soluble stabilizer in place. I will wash these away. And isn't that lovely though? But let's take a look at, you know, notice how the, the stripe here, or the variegated thread, goes in this direction and over here I change the direction of the fill so that it looks uh, uh, to be a little bit variable. And here is the, uh, an adorable little jacket. This is from my charm collection and I call this the Chanel jacket. But in, when you stitch it in variegated thread, oh my goodness, it looks either like an ugly sweater for Christmas or it looks like a jockey's jacket. There's all kinds of imagination for that. Super fun. Okay, so now let's take a closer look at Forest Green. And Forest Green is made up of um, four different colors. We have our neon a green and a silver green. Christmas green and hedge. These are the four that make that up. I thought it would be quite appropriate to stitch it on a shamrock for St. Patrick's Day coming up. It kind of looks like a tartan plaid. So that would be lovely on embroidered on a scarf or, you know, a sweater or sweatshirt, something like that. But let's take a look at what happens when you stitch with a complex fill, a satin and a run. So on a complex fill, you'll notice when you're lines of stitching are quite long, that's when you get that modeled look. 
But when they're short, that's when you uh, get a striped effect. So you can select, you know, uh, what kind of project by looking at an embroidery design and analyzing the length of the stitch or the area of what effect you're going to get. And you can also do that in software, which we'll do in a moment. And then of course a satin, you're gonna get a really uh, obvious stripe, a repeatable stripe that you'll see over and over as it stitches. Okay. Um, and then our denim blues, oh, this is quite popular. And I've seen this stitched out on denim and boy, does that look beautiful. So on our denim blue, this is made up of Celtic blue um, and night horizon, baby blue, and slate blue. These are the four colors that make up this denim. And when that's stitched in a complex fill, it really does look like denim, doesn't it? So if you're doing any kind of, oh, if you're stitching a farmer in a field or something and you want his pants to look like overalls and it's a complex fill and not an applique, choose that denim blue because that will really give you the look that you're looking for. Okay, then now let's go over to sunset. And I think most people absolutely love this sunset collection thread because man, it really pops. I've stitched it on a, a white quilt, which believe it or not, it pops off of that. And of course on black, it's phenomenal. So here we have the, uh, we have spring green, a neon rose, neon orange, and neon fuchsia. And it's these four together that make up this really fun variegated thread, which is Sunset V101. Love that. It's awesome. Okay, so let's take a look at some runs. Run stitches. So, you know, pebbles is so popular for um, quilting, right? We love to do that. And when that's stitched in the green, it just really does give a variety of the shades of green and, and doesn't make it so flat. It adds a little bit more dimension to it because of the different colors. Now you can combine um, different, this is greens and then the sunset I think I used here for the pumpkin. So you, don't be afraid to use two different variegated projects uh, spools of thread in a simple project like this. It really can add some punch to it. And then next, this is a font that has been digitized to kind of, I call it, it's confetti-like. And the digitizing is erratic and very geometric. And the stitches actually lay on top of each other to give you a true modeled look. So you can see how it's really hard to identify the stitch path in this area of the letter. Easier, most certainly, to identify the column, the satin column as the border on the outside and inside of that letter. But both, when put together, it's really quite effective. Aren't they fun? Okay, and then this, I have to share this again. I shared this earlier in the year. This was digitized by my friend, uh, Roy Garland here at Dime. And here he has layered different sections of the um, variegated thread so that it blends so smoothly. You really don't see where the green stops and the yellow starts or the purple and so forth. These are rather long stitches. They're probably about 3.0. Again, they're very geometric and they overlap and go in a, an erratic pattern. But it really does bring that beautiful, um, Afro to just to life. I mean, Jimi Hendrix, who doesn't love that? You could just hear his music when you look at that colorful embroidery design. That's awesome. Just awesome. Okay. And so let's take a look at columns when we stitch a column with variegated thread. So here is one of uh, an early sample of my quilt shop where I used the variegated thread for my fabric bolts. And you can see that the direction of the stitching, right? Starts at the top, goes down. And so that's all my blues kind of look the same, but because the height of that column is, um, doesn't divide easily into the variegated thread. So we get different effects. You know, it's not all dark blue in one area and gray in the next and, and light blue. So that's kind of fun. And here we have those same fabric bolts that are 
that are all stitched in um, the variegated threads. Now I am using a variety of the threads, not all the rainbow here, but I just thought you'd like to see what they would look like, those fabric bolts when they're all stitched um, in a variegated thread. And of course the final, uh, I have two versions where I stitched one in just solid color and others that have a mix of it. So here's a good example, <clears throat> excuse me, of um, we now this this one in this variegated thread 107 is not in the rainbow pack but it's a great example of runs satins and then our column right we already saw that in the denim blues in the forest but look what happens when you change the direction of the complex fill in your software and that's something that you would do in software you can't do that at your machine so now instead of running diagonally we're running horizontally and we get a true stripe, an absolute true st stripe. So good for an awning maybe, right? If that's what you're going for. Good for denim, good for um, adding a modeled effect to fabric that you don't want to have a defined striped area. So there we go, love that. All right, so I thought I would um, <laughs> go into software and kind of show you some of that. Okay, Debbie Norman, Wayne, you say the website says the four pack or six pack may vary. Does that mean I am not getting what I am seeing on this de de demo? If you order today, you will get what you are seeing in this demo. I can tell you that, um, you know, it's been a blessing, uh, the demand for our product, but uh, so, sometimes we might run out of one color. But right now we, we have gobs of rainbow. So if you go ahead and you order it today, you will be assured to get these four colors that are in the rainbow collection. Okay, uh, let's see. And uh, what other questions do we have before I jump into software? I, <laughs> let's see, okay. You still have the four packs of thread. I can't find them on your website anymore. Yeah, they're there, the four packs. They Oh, the quartets. Is that what you're talking about? Not sure. Um, could, uh, could one of our team members check on the quartets? We may be sold out of quartets at this time. And that question is about a solid color uh, thread pack, not our special today. So uh, keep your eye out for them. They are currently on back order. And when they become available again, we'll put them up. Okay, so let's go ahead into software and take a look at how we can, how can I change my screen? Let's see, oh, Sam's gonna let me hide out and do that quickly. All right, here we are. I have um, a sample of how I like to test variegated thread. So we have um, a complex fill rectangle that I digitized a striped column and a running stitch. So I thought I'd just show you quickly how to do that. So I select um, the rectangle from the artwork tools and draw and drag. And then with the select tool, I right click and say convert to complex fill. And it will default to the first color in the palette. Now in my palette, I have exquisite medley thread added to all of the dime thread library that's in there, meaning, you know, just about everybody on the planet's library is in there. On Monday, you will be, if you have our software, software, you will be notified that there will be an update to the software. And on Monday, uh, the software will include the medley thread. So you will be able to access this library in your embroidery design software if you use our software. Okay, so to change that direction, I then select the shape tool and I'm looking for these black nodes and I'm going to change them into a horizontal fashion. And if you notice, as I hold down the cursor, left click and hold down, I get a message on the screen that tells me the length of that angle and, and also the angle. So right now I'm at 170 point 179.68, that's close enough to 180 for me. And then when I let that go, now you can see that my complex fill looks completely different. Now, this is computer generated. So it's not going to be exact, you know, your stitch out will vary with variegated thread. So 
It's just a uh, gives you somewhat of a visual of what it's going to look like as you stitch. So, uh, and then I thought I would show you how to do a column. So I'm going to select my uh, satin tool and I will left click and I can hold down the shift key so that I have a straight line. That's not what I do. That's not what I do. So we go left and left and now I'm building my column and there we go. So that was awful wide. So if you don't like what you did, let me show you what you do. You select that shape tool again and you right click sometime today and do edit. And I just want to edit the outlines. So now I can select both of those outlines on the right column and move them in so that I don't get a split satin, I get a straight satin. And let's see, and Gail K, okay, any chance this will be on the Dime tutorial, tutorial YouTubes? Um, possibly. I want to tell you some uh, updates that will be coming in your software so that you know. We're going to be adding in video, in software videos that you can hover your, um, your mouse over a tool and you'll have the option to view a, vi a short video on what that tool does and how do you use it. And uh, they will be added to the software on a continuous basis. We're building our, our lar library and uh, we're waiting for like the first 20 and we'll add them and then we'll add them over time. So we appreciate your patience. We have a group on Facebook that is for Dime Inspiration users. And um, all we talk about there is Dime Inspiration software. We don't talk about other brands of software there. We talk about Dime software because it is, that group is maintained by Dime, Dime employees, Dime educators, and Dime influencers and ambassadors. So if you have questions about another brand of software, I would suggest you find a group for that software and go there to get those questions answered. Okay. Um, I'm Judy Whitaker, who made the small town um, to, with the attic on the small town charm. Not sure why Eileen thinks I'm Sue. Oh, did I say that? Oh, I don't know. So sorry if I said that. Judy Whitaker, I know. I had your name all over that attic on both slides. So I know Judy Whitaker made that, not Sue. So apologize for that if there was some misunderstanding. Yes. And Jackie Burke, you say everyone is helpful on the Facebook page. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. We do try to respond, you know, as uh, as best we can. We all have full-time jobs and, you know, we're not really supposed to be on social media when we're working, right? So anyway, but we're doing our best for sure. We are definitely doing our best. So, you know, it's a lot of fun to do... Um, to play with our software, any software. And I think someone asked if they don't see PEP on our website. Well, I'll tell you why. Our software is sold by independent retailers. Not We, we only sell our software line through um, independent retailers. So that means your small town dealer and some internet, some of those small town dealers also have websites. If you are looking for more information on our software we, and, and dealers, you can go to inspiredbydime.com and all information on software is there. But you cannot buy PEP directly from us. Uh, and But I can tell you there's lots of dealers that would be happy to sell it to you and at a very reasonable price, not what you see as the MSRP. Just wink, wink, you'll know call your dealer. They'll help you out. Uh, and Vonnie Davison, nice to see you here. She said to Judy Whitaker, your attic idea is amazing. It is. I think you really took the code. Anybody have the code? Do we have the code for today's? Um, for to Yeah, I have the code probably right here. So let's see it. Oh, yeah, it's a big long one. So let's go ahead and put PowerPoint up there, Sam. There we go. The code's right there. It is free shipping, uh, and that's supposed to say rainbow four pack. So free shipping RNBW four pack. Okay, that's a watch, that's a mouthful. And yes, Barbara Jett, you wanna know if you can watch the video again? Absolutely, you can watch this video. It'll be, uh, stays on YouTube and it stays on Facebook. You can watch the rebroadcast at any time. 
And I hope that you uh, have liked our, our Facebook page and that you have also uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel so you will always be notified when we go live again. And uh, so what did you think about um, the variegated thread? Is that something you would use? Give me a thumbs up or give me a heart or an emoji. Let me know if that's um, one of your favorite threads because you know, I need to know what you like to do so I know um, what to teach you and what to show you for sure. We're always looking for that. So just give us a shout out in, in the uh, emoji so we know. So next week, we are going to be talking about organizing your thread stash because it's that time of year, right? January, that's when we all want to kind of get our ducks in a row and get our stash together and so forth. So we're going to be talking about organizing your thread stash. I hope to see more of your small town charm quilt shops. I'll be looking for them online. So don't forget to post with the hashtag dime sew along. Uh, so that'll, that'll be super fun to see what you people come up with. And I know that many of you are inspiring each other, like Sue Whitaker, I bet we're going to see some more addicts, which is wonderful. And I think we'll see some more vinyl uh, or, you know, faux leather awnings. I think we'll see some that are, um, you know, really have a personalization of their favorite quilt shop in their town, or maybe one that was in their family previously. Anyway. I can't wait to see what you are stitching in your small town charm. So till then, we'll see you next week. Bye for now.